The Complete Control Multiplex Wiring System is an amazing piece of equipment. Before we get into everything it does, you need to make sure the motorhome is leveled with the transmission in N or neutral. Also, you need to set the parking brake to operate the slide rooms. The engine should be started before putting the rooms out to make sure the system has enough amperage to operate most efficiently. One more note, the engine must be turned off to operate the awnings. Now, let's get started. Throughout the course of this video, we are going to talk about hard buttons and soft or virtual buttons. The hard buttons are exactly that. They are the five buttons on either side of the actual multiplex unit. The soft or virtual buttons are what you are going to press on the display screen. The home button gives you an overview page of the system running within the motorhome, along with information on the key features of the electrical system. Looking at the info under the DC display, HSE, that is your house battery, CHS is your chassis battery. Right below informs you whether or not you are getting a charge. Under the AC display, you can see if you're running 110 volts when plugged into shore power and if the generator is operating. You can also see if the inverter is enabled. The home screen also lets you know if your auto gen start is set and if you have the generator running. At the bottom, you get a quick check to see the source of AC power, whether you are plugged into shore power or if you are running the inverter. This screen gives you access to other screens, holding tank information. This gives you quick access to your water heater and whether you want to heat with gas or electric. You can also see if the water pump is on or off. To turn the pump on or off, simply touch and press the screen. The AC button. This button measures the amount of electrical 110 volt electricity coming into the motorhome. Electrical power from a shoreline connection or the generator feeds the information to this screen. Your motorhome is also equipped with an inverter. This inverter will take 12 volt battery power from the batteries and convert the electricity to 110 volts. The inverter is really handy to use when generator or shoreline connections are not available or needed, but when you need power for the TVs, refrigerators, and a few select outlets. The 110 volt system has two lines coming into the coach. Each line will be represented on the screen. These values should be equal or close to each other. The power source button will show what source is being used to power the unit. To toggle from one source to the other, continue to push the virtual button on the touch screen. To start the generator, hold the Gen Virtual button for three to five seconds until the generator fires up and continues to run. The inverter function is also listed on this menu. The options for the inverter are disabled or pass through. If the generator or shore power is available, the inverter will be disabled. If the pass-through function is selected, the inverter will provide 110 volt electricity when generator or shore power is removed. The AGS virtual button controls the automatic generator start on the motorhome. The AGS system provides a backup solution to make sure batteries in the unit stay charged. With AGS, you can program the generator to come on automatically, like when the interior temperature of the motorhome starts climbing, or even the amount of battery power or the loss of shore power. When the AGS is engaged, a separate screen pops up to warn about potential hazards with starting the AGS system in an enclosed or unventilated area. Make sure your motorhome is in a place where generator use is allowed. This is important to point out. Each time power to the coach has been removed, the generator has been started and stopped, the ignition is turned on and off, the parking brake is released and applied, or if it's been inactive for 30 days, the AGS function will turn off and you will need to reactivate the AGS function. The block heater virtual button controls the 110 volt element inside the engine. The block heater requires the generator or shore power to be engaged. The block heater warms the engine oil, making for easier starts in cold weather. The block heater is always recommended before starting when the air temperature is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The block heater will not function if any zone of the climate control is set to cool. When you press the inverter charge virtual button, it takes you from the home screen to the IC screen. 
This screen serves up a lot of information. It shows the power status throughout the coach, any inverter faults that may have taken place, and the model number of the inverter. To leave this screen and return to the AC screen, push the AC power page virtual button at the bottom of the screen or the AC hard button on the side of the controller. The EMS load status virtual button controls the energy management system. In rare cases, too much electrical power may be required. The EMS system lists 110 volt appliances and a priority for usage. In the case of reduced power, the EMS system will shed different loads to make sure the motorhome protects itself from popping a circuit breaker. The menu lists, in order, what function will shed first. If further electrical power is not available after shedding a load, it sheds a load again. This process continues until all loads are shed. As soon as electrical power is restored, the shed loads will be re-engaged. Once again, to return to the main AC screen, push the AC power page virtual button at the bottom of the page or the AC hard button on the side of the controller. The Gen slash AGS option. This button provides access to a new page. The first option will be AGS triggers. These menu items are set at the factory. No further changes are needed to have the AGS system work correctly. If changes are absolutely necessary, use the virtual button to scroll to other options. At the bottom of this page, the second virtual button is AGS Set. This screen provides access to the automatic generator start settings. Once again, these settings are preset at the factory. Changes to these settings can be completed using the virtual buttons and scrolling through the options. Gen Set. This is the final button located at the bottom of the page. These settings are used along with the AGS system to complete the generator run cycle. Changes here determine the amount of time the generator will run when the AGS system is engaged. DC hard button. The DC button gives you complete control of the 12 volt loads. This is where you can monitor the battery levels as well as charge status of the batteries if found. The charger virtual button changes the status of the battery charger. When 110 volt electricity is provided, the charger can be activated. Press the charger virtual button to change from disabled to one of the other charge functions. The most common charging rates will be bulk, absorb, and floating charge. The inverter virtual button activates the inverter system on the motorhome. The inverter is used to provide 110 volt AC electricity by converting the coach battery's 12 volt DC electricity. The inverter allows you to use the TVs, refrigerators, microwave and select outlets throughout the motorhome. The inverter is only needed if no generator or shoreline power is available. The lower right hand corner of the DC page has a virtual button labeled inverter charger settings. Pressing this button shows you low battery cutout. Here, you set the voltage where the inverter will stop working based on the battery voltage. BAC dropout. This is how you set the AC voltage when the inverter will stop working. Shore breaker size. This sets the size of the campground breaker. Max charge rate lets you set the percentage of maximum charge. This page provides a virtual button for the IC bat option. Press this button to bring up the battery settings option. Here, the type and amperage hours for the battery are configured. The virtual buttons change these settings. It is important to know the battery type if changing these settings. The batteries installed at the factory are lead acid flooded type batteries. Other battery types available on the market are gel, AGM and AGM2 type. The charging system is not configured and does not support the installation of lithium battery types. Remember, the type and size have been preset at the factory and do not require any changes unless the house batteries in the motorhome have been changed. Slides hard button. This page is where you control the slide rooms and awnings. For your slide outs, the touch screen has a little diagram of the motorhome slide rooms. The front, rear, PS, which means passenger side, and DS, which is driver side, right there on the screen. Use the arrow buttons to move the slide rooms in and out. You need to hold down the button in order for the room to slide in or out. 
At the bottom of the screen is the awnings button. These virtual buttons will control the front door and patio awnings. This is important to point out. All electrical awnings are located on the passenger side of the motorhome. If a motorhome has two patio awnings, both will be located on the passenger side, but the virtual buttons may appear under the DS label driver side on the touchscreen. The climate button. Pressing the climate button brings up the menu where you can choose if you would like heat or air conditioning. At the top, you'll see the current temperature inside the coach. Right below is the thermostat. Hit plus to make it warmer, minus to make it cooler. If you want the air conditioning on, set the virtual button on the left to cool. You can select the fan speed, auto, high, or low with the virtual button on the right. If you want heat, press the virtual button to the furnace or heat pump mode. Again, you choose your fan speed with the virtual button on the right. You can set different temperatures in different parts of the coach by choosing front or rear with the virtual buttons below. Slides hard button. This page is where you control the slide rooms and awnings. For your slide outs, the touch screen has a little diagram of the motorhome slide rooms. The front, rear, PS, which means passenger side, and DS, which is driver side, right there on the screen. Use the arrow button to move the slide rooms in and out. You need to hold down the button in order for the room to slide in or out. At the bottom of the screen is the awnings button. These virtual buttons will control the front door and patio awnings. This is important to point out. All electrical awnings are located on the passenger side of the motorhome. If a motorhome has two patio awnings, both will be located on the passenger side, but the virtual buttons may appear under the DS label driver side on the touch screen. The fan button. This button controls the ceiling vents and bedroom ceiling fan. The different fan locations are shown with a virtual power button below. The fans can be turned on by pressing the button. However, the fan will not start until the lid on the fan has opened. To open the lid, push the up arrow one time. The lid will open and the fan will turn on as soon as the lid is partially open. Closing the fan lid is a simple single press of the down arrow virtual button. The ceiling fan in the bedroom can also be controlled on this page. The modes for the ceiling fan are high, low, and off. 12 volt control panel. So let's say you go turn something on and it is not functioning like it is supposed to. You need to walk to the back of the coach and locate this control panel. Everything controlled by the multiplex wiring system is shown on this panel. It is broken into groups and each item has its own indicator light on the right. If it is glowing green, the feature is working. All the breakers are at the bottom labeled a B1 through B12. For example, say the kitchen fan will not go up. That is number 25. Find the light for number 25 on the right. If it is not green, look at your breakers below. If one is popped out, simply press it in to reset it. If there is an issue with the slide rooms, in an emergency situation, you can extend or retract them all from this panel. With the green light in the center on, you can then press the direction you need the slide room to go. If the problem still exists after resetting the breakers, contact your Thor Motor Coach dealer. If there is an update to the software, Thor Motor Coach technicians will use this port for the update.